Good morning, folks, and welcome to the warm up your data pack and statistic build up that you need for today's game. Leeds United versus Plymouth Argyle in the Championship. Leeds will want to get back to winning ways after a disappointing bore draw with Bristol City on the road last week. Leeds coming into this game with a reasonably good home record this season, a bit of momentum at home. Plymouth coming into this game struggling away from home. We'll get to that detail as we go through this. We will go through the form guide, the key form that to keep an eye on in this particular game. We'll look at the team news for both sides as, as well as the key statistics in the game. We'll look at head-to-head form as well as the league table and the key performers to keep an eye out for in this game. We'll start off though with this with the form guide for both sides. Leeds United at the home side so we'll start with them. Two wins three draws in their last five games. Leeds sitting in third place in the division. A draw last week against Bristol City meant Leeds now have a gap to top spot. Sunderland a five point gap that Leeds will want to start chipping away at before it starts to move like last season. A win could put Leeds into second place though depending on how Burnley get on in their game over the course of the weekend. From a Plymouth Argyle perspective one win, three defeats and one draw in their last five games out. The draw coming in their last game out in the league they will want to win this to try and ease relegation worries far from bottom at the moment they'll want to get out of that position as quick as they can Wayne Rooney will want to get some momentum before the pressures of his last job start to pile up on him and there's talk of him leaving his job before he's gotten into the rhythm of things so he will want that from a key form perspective and this is where we take a look at Leeds home record as the home side and Plymouth's away record as a side on the road. From a Leeds perspective, fifth best in the division so far. Leeds have 13 points from a possible 18 points taken so far at home. Four wins, one draw and one loss. They scored 12 goals in that time as well and conceded five in those games so far from Plymouth Argyle perspective not great looking at it from an away perspective only they sit bottom of the away table in 24th in the league. Played six, one none, one draw five losses only scoring once in that length of time and conceding 13 goals in those six matches which is not ideal for them at all from a team news perspective leads coming into this with a couple of little worries that weren't there last week Joffy Gellhart will have a late finish check although Joffy hasn't really been involved this season so not the end of the world and I do apologise to Joffy for that it's not your fault but not a massive worry Ethan Ampadu Ilya Groove out long term we know about that Max Vober, good news, is back in team training this week. Although Daniel Farkas said he's unlikely to start the game, having been out for five and a half weeks. But he has trained, which means he is available and could make the bench for this game. Dan James has had a slight hamstring tweak this week. Just, again, recovering from the hamstring injury that he had. Been put into games probably ahead of time. And it's a bit of a struggle. But they said he did, ha- did take part in the light team training session on Thursday. So he could be involved in the game, but I would suggest maybe holding him back for this one. Manor Solomon needs minutes and needs match fitness. Maybe this is the game to put him in to try and break that fitness for him. Patrick Bamford has a slight adductor issue picked up in training this week as well. Not good news for Pat Bamford. Leeds have been very patient waiting on Pat Bamford to come back from all of his injury woes to get him fully fit and then another injury now picked up again. Although they did say he did take part as well as Dan James in the light team training session on Thursday. So again, could very likely be on the bench and be involved in that game. Jaden Bogle is suspended for that game, but Leeds will see Junior Firpo return, but there is question marks then around what does Daniel Farke do with the right-back position. My understanding of Isaac Schmidt signing for Leeds was that he was the right-back cover, while Sam Byron was the left-back cover. We'll see in this game if Daniel Farke believes that. Personally, I think he'll go with Sam Byram in that right back position. He did have a good game last week. Some people have said he was poor, but across the board on every single metric and every app algorithm I've looked at, Sam Byron was man the match this week. So, yeah, he could very easily win right back. From a Plymouth Argyle team perspective, missing quite a few coming into this game. Ibrahim Sissoko is suspended. He will not take part in this game. Goalkeeper Connor Hazard is out for them, as well as Brendan Galloway, Lewis Gibbons, Joe Edwards are all out of the game with injuries. Darko JB is tied. He cannot play in this game as a Leeds United contracted player. But Andre Gray could make his first start for Plymouth Argyle after coming off the bench in their last game and scoring on his I suppose, first debut before he makes a potential starting first team debut 
this weekend. Ryan Hardy is also expected to return into the midfield to take the place of Darko JB, and we may see him partner former Legion United central midfielder Adam Forshaw, who is very much a part of what Plymouth are doing right now in their side. Moving on to the key statistics going into this game and things just to keep a little eye out for, and some of these could be triggering, so warning ahead of, th- ahead of time. We'll get to that in a sec. Leeds are unbeaten in their last 10 league games against Plymouth, winning 8 and drawing 2. Plymouth have won just 1 of their 20 league visits to Elland Road. Last victory was a 3-2 win coming in February 1962. And Leeds are unbeaten in their last seven games in the league, winning four, drawing three. Leeds will want to turn those draws into wins if they're going to close that gap on Sunderland and hope to have a better season than they had last year. There are some interesting ones there. All the stats and all the data point to a comfortable Leeds United win, but we know that that's not the case. Last week I said someone's O had to go with the Leeds unbeaten away record and Bristol City's unbeaten home record. Then I did say it has all the aspects of a draw written all over it and it ended up being that way. Leeds need to go win this game. No messing around. Put a number on the board. Statement victory. Go punish the side that have struggled on the road and they've had, been, they've had some heavy defeats on the road as well. So get on that, Leeds. We want to see a convincing performance after a disappointing performance against Bristol City performance usually kicks the result into gear if Leeds have a very good performance chances are we, we win that game as well plenty of attack and talent let's get at them let's stop let's stop with the passive football let's get at them and see how we get on from a starting 11 perspective what I, I think the formation will be and if you're watching this just before kickoff you'll know I don't we'll guess in this ahead of time I think Ilan Melier in goal, Sam Byram right back, Junior Firpo left back, centre backs of Joe Rode and Pascal Stroud, Joe Rothwell and Eutanak continuing their partnership in the middle of the park. Willie Nanto, Manor Salmon on the wings for me with Brendan Aronson in the 10 and Matteo Joseph in the number 9 position on the bench. Carol Darlow, Max Vower is likely to be back involved so you can put him in there to replace the suspended Jaden Bogle, James DeBio, Joshua Gilavogi. Schmidt, Piro, Chambers and crew will be make up the bench for me. That's the team I think will be out on the pitch uh, on Saturday. Let me know yourself what you think the formation is going to be if you're doing this ahead of time. If it's if it's an hour before a kickoff, maybe don't put the team sheet in because you know what the team sheet is. Same with score predictions. Let me know what you think the score is going to be as well down below. From a league table perspective, Leeds sitting third in the table. Bit of a gap to the top spot, but very much could take the second spot going over the weekend Plymouth sitting just outside the relegation zones as well they're pretty tight down there as well and they want to get that sorted out key players that we want to keep an eye on coming into this game are the top performers at least so far between both sides from a Leeds perspective Willie Nanto has been an excellent formula group still sitting there from his time in the first half of the season but most of the Leeds prof- impressive performances coming from the defence Pascal Stroke Jr. Fer- T- Ferpo and Jaden Bogle in there as well Brendan Aronson Larger Mazzani and Aotanaka probably leads more attacking options that are that are, are doing quite well but from a Plymouth perspective Lewis Gibson will miss out in this game is probably their best player along with Adam Randall so far this season Sissoko is also missing the game as well so as is Joe Edwards so they're missing quite a lot of their top performers Darko JB in that mix there as well and he won't be part of this game due to the uh, the loan agreement with Leeds as well you can't play against your parent club so look all in all on paper this should look like a very comfortable Leeds United win but Leeds will need to go out and perform as I said before we want to see an attacking performance in Leeds we don't want to see as much going backwards unless they really have to go backwards let's try and see a more progressive performance from Leeds United and put a number on the board score prediction wise I'd like to see think Leeds will put three past to Plymouth and not concede at home so I'm going for 3-0 win to Leeds fingers crossed folks enjoy the game Let's hope Leeds can put a proper performance in and pick everyone up this weekend as we head into what will be a busy week with three games coming up before the international break. So I will talk to you on Monday for the news and for the review of this game. Enjoy your weekend. Fingers crossed, three points. Talk to you soon. See you.